Hey guys, my name is Matt Cox and I'm a con man. Today I'm going to be reviewing the movie Gattaca. There's a lot of reasons I like this movie. I used to, I used to get asked, you know, what's, the, what's your favorite movie? And I would always say, oh, it's a toss up between Gattaca and Shawshank Redemption. You know, and I like both those movies because the guys were in such desperate situations and they, they came up with a way to, to get out of it, uh, to, you know, to overcome. And that's, that's really, but, but that's really what I like about both those movies that in, in its simplest form. Here's the thing. I watched both of them about a week ago and hands down, it's Gattaca. Love Gattaca. So although I have a lot in common with, uh, with Shawshank. So, the, but the point is that it's definitely Gattaca, reviewing Gattaca. It's got some great uh, actors in it. Uma Thurman, Ethan Hawke, Jude Law. It is set in a dystopian society where everything, not everything, people are genetically engineered, some people. And you end up getting this entire class of society that is superior to everyone else. And they end up being the ruling class, obviously. And it's, it's, also, uh, it's also a kind of a, they call a, a futuristic, got, got, it, it's shot in that futuristic punk rock kind of thing where they use old vehicles. You know, they did the same thing. There's a bunch of movies shot like this. Um, I want to say is it in time or out of time was shot like that. Uh, anyway, the point is great movie and I'm reviewing it today and let's go ahead and play the intro. <laughs> Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the original. This is actually part of the trailer. I've cut it up a little bit, but it's part of the trailer for Gattaca. And I, I like it because it kind of, it really lets you know it, set, it sets up the mood for the whole, the whole thing. So let's go ahead and play the clip. Genetics, what can it mean? The ability to perfect the physical and mental characteristics of every unborn child. In the not too distant future, our DNA will determine everything about us. Where you can work, who you should marry, what you're capable of achieving. Welcome to Gattaca. All right, that's it. That's Gattaca. So the movie's protagonist is a guy named, it, it's played by, he's played by Ethan Hawke, but it's, his name is uh, Vincent Freeman. So Vincent Freeman is born a natural birth uh, by two loving parents, uh, two sharp, smart, loving parents. You would think he should do well, but unfortunately he's born in this society where you genetically, you need to be born in a certain way to have the best chance in life. And, and they go into all this in the movie and, you know, very subtly, I mean, it's a great movie. So he's born, and unfortunately you realize this in the next clip, is that he's born and the moment you're born, they can tell everything about you. And it, he's going to die at the age of 30. So I'm going to play the clip, and I, but I'm going to set up the uh, part of the clip is this, is that he's born naturally. Although smart, he's, he's obviously got issues. He's got depression, he has myopia, he has the normal things that people have, the normal issues. So because he's also got a heart defect and he'll be dead by the age of 30, their next child, his family goes ahead and they, they have that child genetically engineered to not have any issues. And as a result, they get this super smart kid who's got no, no problems, and he's obviously superior to his older brother, who's only older by a few years. Anyway, let me go ahead and, and show you the clip. So here is the clip. Ten fingers, ten toes, that's all that used to matter. Stick him in the foot. Now, only Find out exactly old, what's exact wrong with this kid. Let's check him out. Was already known. 
This is great. They start reading off. They actually read off a whole Neurological list of issues. I cut them out. Probability. Manic depression. This is the one I wanted you to hear. Attention deficit disorder, 89% probability. Heart disorder, life expectancy, 30.2 years. 30 years. He won't last longer than 30 years is what that he's told, his father's told. The name for the certificate? And, and so his, no. whole, his, um, his father's so Vincent. upset about it, he doesn't even give him his first name. They then have their second child born sure do in the natural no, way, which is now the correct way to have a child. And as children, he, he's told by his father the entire, his entire life, he's told by his father, the only way you'll see the inside of a space. It was the last time we swam because together. Because that's the whole thing. He grows up and out into the open astronaut. sea. He wants to go to Canada, Like always, knowing each stroke like to the NASA. horizon was one we'd have to make back to the happen. shore. So his brother, he and his brother as kids used to play chicken. They would swim Every out as far as Anton they could go. Every time tried to pull away, he found me and right beside him. I've this several times. I've cut those scenes out. This is the important one. Until finally, the impossible happened. Because his brother always wins. It was the one moment in our lives that my brother was not as strong as he believed, and I was not as weak. It was the moment that made everything else possible. I love this scene because it lets you know in the right set of circumstances you can overcome. So he ends up, uh, he leaves his family. Like he's like I was 18 never years more old or certain of how and far away I was from my goal than when life, I was standing right beside it. So he, he ends up becoming a janitor. He says in here, I cleaned the toilets for half the state. He ends up getting a job at Gattaca as, as a janitor. And you know, it's, just, it's just a desperate situation. You've got a genius you know, doing manual labor when he should be, he should be an astronaut. But you know what? Your, your, your DNA says different and we, we don't want to invest the money. They don't want to invest millions of dollars or whatever it takes to train these guys. We don't dump all that money. You're going to be dead in a couple of years. And what you realize when you see the, when you watch the, uh, the film, what you realize is this. Later on, you, you basically realize it. Uh, he, he gets past his expiration date. He's supposed to be dead. So when he gets past that, that death sentence, he realizes that, that there's something else happening here that you can't beat the human spirit. Okay, I've got, a, I've got a problem with my heart and I should be dead. And science says I should be dead, but science is wrong all the fucking time. And so he says, fuck it, I'm gonna keep going. Now I should be dead, the fucking handcuffs are off. So the one thing you were concerned about, you're not concerned about anymore. So now he goes all in. And so he goes to this guy, and this guy hooks him up with another guy who's in a wheelchair. But he's genetically superior to everyone else. He can get in Gattaca. He can become an astronaut. Ethan Hawke's character, Vincent Freeman, just needs to give in his identity and fool everyone. And so that's, that's the next scene. Let me go ahead and, and I'll show you this scene, which is great. So that's the scene. For all my brave talk, I knew it was just that. No matter how much I trained or how much I studied, the best test score in the world wasn't going to matter unless I had the blood test to go with it. How did you hear about me? People? You have somebody in mind? For the genetically superior, success is easier to attain, but it is by no means guaranteed. After all, there is no gene for So fate. the broker hooks him up and with when, Jude Law's character. Jerome. For one reason or another, a member of the elite falls on hard Jerome. times 
Their genetic identity becomes Jerome a Morrow? I think it's Jerome Morrow. Models. And he was a track star or something. Yeah, or no, he was a swimming star. Uh, I mean, whatever. He was in the Olympics. He was in the Olympics. He was, uh, he ended up taking second in the Olympics. You find out he put, he's fucking, he's an amazing guy, but he had an accident. What did I tell you? Luckily, it was outside the country, and no one knows. We don't look anything alike. It's close enough. Who was up there? When I sent me there. So he's just got to take his place. Becoming Jerome. Myopia is one of the most obvious signs of a disadvantaged birth. You understand I take 25% of everything you make. I guess that's it. So they end up, listen, they fix his, they, they give him contacts, they dye his hair, they do all kinds of, I mean, they, they cut stuff off him. And the problem is that Jerome is like six foot one or something. And Vincent isn't. They actually have to cut and add two inches to Vincent's legs and he wears lifts so that he looks like he's six foot tall or about six foot tall, six foot one. In order to take his place, he can't go in there at five foot nine, you know? So they end up literally sawing his fucking legs in half and putting in the bone and everything. It's, it's fucking... It's a, it's a pretty cool movie. So, I mean, he's, bro, he's all in. You let him cut your fucking legs off and reattach them, you're all in. So, here's the next clip where he actually goes to Gattaca and he does well. He does great at Gattaca. Congratulations. Just like that, got a job. They just, a blood test. Of his own superior body matter. So that I might pass for so him. So every day, customize urine pouches for the frequent substance his tests, entire body down. fingertip blood sachets for security checks, and vials filled with and other Jerome traces. Prepares While Eugene supplied me with matter. a new identity, I paid the rent and kept him in the style to which he'd become accustomed. I was now a member of a relatively new and particularly so detested of segment of society. Testing, everything. So One of those who refuses like to play the hand when he was dead. dead skin, he's I'm most commonly hair, known he's as doing a all kinds of stuff and scrubbing himself down. Problem is, he does great, but there's a murder. And they start, the cops come in and they start looking. They found my eyelash. For someone, they come across they his eyelash. picture plastered up all over the place. I can't turn around without seeing my own face. They'll recognize me. They will recognize me. They'll recognize me. I don't recognize you. They won't marry the eyelash to you. They won't believe that one of their elite could have suckered them all this time. No, 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 no. We changed nothing. But Jerome is saying, you know, no, no, we're going forward. Uh, and so the movie continues where there's an investigation and you realize that the lead agent in the investigation is actually Vincent's brother. It's not really a spoiler alert because I think you kind of figure it out when you're watching the movie. I did. And you realize, oh my God, because see, they, they changed the kids. They ch as he gets older, they use different actors. So you don't really know. But you figure it out pretty quickly, I, I think, because something's going on. Like the brother initially he knows. He, he, he knows what's going on, and he knows he's there. He's tracking him. He's trying to figure it out. He comes close several times to catching him. His brother knew, always knew growing up he wanted to be an astronaut. So his brother knows that it's very possible that he's here. And he, of course, he, he also knows. He knows they're looking for his brother. So he, he feels confident that his brother has assumed someone's identity. Anyway, he ends up dating uh, Uma Thurman's character. Uh, I forget what her name is. They start seeing each other, and she's constantly pointing out, oh, well, you can't do this because of that. You can't do this because of that. You can't. And Ethan's like, well, why not? So at, at one point, his brother actually comes to his house because his brother's like, I know. They actually catch the, the real killer. And they catch, catch the real killer, and it's clearly not him. Like He thought, oh, they're going to get the killer and it's gonna be my brother. Well, he gets there, it's not his brother. So he's like, fuck. 
Well, he's kind of realized that his brother is Jerome. His brother's pretending to be Jerome. However, keep in mind, it's been 14 or 15 years since he's seen his brother. So he gets there, and I don't know if he doesn't recognize him or what exactly happens, but he goes to the house, and Jerome, the real Jerome, actually impersonates or plays himself, and he takes blood, and the brother's just like fucking shocked. He's, now he just doesn't know what the fuck's going on. So great, it's a, it's a great scene, but what happens is Uma Thurman's character backs him up, and so when he backs him up, uh, um, this is a scene right after she puts it all together. How are you, Jerome? Not bad, you brother. Irene. Irene. Don't touch she me. takes off. Don't touch me. Irene. I don't even know who you are. I'm the same person I was yesterday. I can't hear anymore of your lies, Jerome. Oh, my name is Vincent. Right? Vincent Anton Freeman, and I'm a faith birth or a degenerate, whatever you want to call it. But I am not a murderer. You're a god child. But we do have one thing in common. Only I don't have 20 or 30 years left in mine. Mine is already 10,000 beats overdue. It's not possible. For whatever it's worth, I'm here to tell you that it is possible. It's great. So he ends up going to Gattaca and his brother's waiting for him. Has it been so long you don't recognize your own brother? Parents both died thinking they'd outlived you. I had my doubts. What are you doing here, Anton? I should ask you that question. I have a right to be here. You don't. I committed no murder. If you remember, remember he you he beat fraud. his brother at one point. You've gone as far as you can go. You come with me now. There are still a few million miles left to go. In case you haven't noticed, it's a great fucking movie. I don't movie. need any rescuing. But you did once. You didn't beat me that day. I beat myself. Come on, bro. You want me to prove it to you? I'll prove it to you. I do. So they go swimming. He convinces them, let's go fucking do it again. You think you can win? Let's do it again. They go swimming. Every stroke. Vincent! Alex, they have to come back. Vincent! Where's the shore? We're too far out. You want to quit? We're too far out! You want to quit? No! Vincent! How are you doing this, Vincent? How have you done any of this? You want to know how I did it? This is how I did it, Anton. I never saved anything for the swim back. Percent all in, and it just I'm not, just not, not saving anything for this one. Now. It's it's all in, or you know, he drowns. Don't give a fuck. He's cleaning fucking toilets for for a living. He wants to live his dream. He is 100% committed to his dream, and I fucking love that. It you know it reminds me of. Um, Fuck, what's his name? Uh, Hernan, uh, Hernan Cortez. I, I think he was a, a Spanish, was he a conquistador? No, he, I think he, he was a, um, it's like a commander in the Spanish uh, army or, or no, I'm sorry, uh, Navy. And uh, he, took, he took Mexico. And although this saying is attributed to, uh, I think, uh, uh, Alexander the Great and several other uh, uh, great commanders, uh, mostly it's Cortez uh, that people will, will mention this, is that, you know, when Cortez got to, you know, to Mexico and unloaded all of his soldiers, it's like 500 of them or something, l unloaded all of them, all their supplies, because he said, we're taking Mexico, we're taking, I think it was the Mayans or Incans or something, I think he's got like, we're taking all fucking, we're taking the whole place. He tells them to burn the boats. Burn the fucking boats. Because we're taking it or we're dying. 
that's all in. I fucking love that. And that's, that's this, that's, that's what I love about this movie. He is 100% committed to the cause. I mean, because why wouldn't you be? So that's why I love the movie. Uh, there's one more clip, and this is the other clip that I love. I love this clip because it's great foreshadowing in the movie. Because periodically throughout the movie, you're seeing these little scenes where he's being tested by this doctor. So they keep throwing the doctor in there. And the doctor keeps mentioning, hey, I have a son. He's a big fan of yours. My son's a big fan of yours. I'll have to tell you about him someday. And Vincent, you know, acts very aloof about the whole thing because he feels, because not that he feels superior, but he's playing a guy who's superior to everyone else. So he's very aloof when he talks to other people because he's like he's better than them. He has that, that air of, uh, of um, superiority. He has that entitlement to, to him. He's a great, great character. Great, great, uh, he plays it great. So at the end though, he's now, he's been beating them. He's been beating them. He's been constantly getting over on them. Finally, his, after his brother, he saves his brother's life for a second time. His brother's like, do what you got to do. So he goes back to Gattaca because he's going to get, he's going, he's an astronaut and his ship is leaving soon. He's going to Titan, which is one of the moons of, uh, um, is it Saturn? Anyway, so he's going to Titan. His, the rocket's about to leave and he goes to get on the rocket and this, the, there's something that happens that he couldn't account for. What is this? New policy. I never did tell you about my son, did I? He's a big fan of yours. Just remember... Fucking never saw it coming. ...that I was as good as any and better than most. He wants to apply here. I could have gone up and back and nobody would have been the wiser. Unfortunately, my son's not all that they promised. His picture shows up, his real picture. And the doctor changes it. your flight, Vincent. And the doctors, you realize it when you watch the movie, the doctor's always known. It's, it's, it's a great movie. It's totally, it's, you know, it's not action packed. But it is life affirming. It is a, it is amazing. You know, uh, I, I think it's definitely if you've never seen it, it's it's so worth worth seeing. Um, bro, I, I typically, honestly, I typically can't even talk about the film without fucking tearing up. And it's and it's it's like a classic. Like the way it's it's shot, the cinematography, everything about it is. It's like, it's timeless. Um, that's it. That's, that's my review. Do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell, share the video to as many people as you can. You know, uh, leave me a comment. Uh, I've got merchandise, uh, so buy a shirt. And if you buy a shirt, Take a picture of yourself in the shirt, send it to me because I'm gonna do a video where I do a whole thing, kind of like a merchandise thing, and I wanna do like a montage of a bunch of people uh, wearing, uh, wearing my merchandise. Anyway, it's silly, but I figure it, it'll be fun. It gives me something. You gotta come up with a whole bunch of stuff. To, uh, so, merchandise, I've got a book, which is my book. It's called Shark in the Housing Pool, and I'm coming out with another book here soon, and I've already got several other books, so buy a book. I've got, there, there are, um, I think uh, one of them's on Audible. I'm about to have two more put on Audible. So I'm going to keep doing the reviews and I think I might switch from reviewing movies to reviewing um, uh, basically major cons. 
Uh, that might happen. I don't know. I'm still playing with it, still trying to figure it out. So that's it. That's where I'm at. And see ya.